Well, good morning, and welcome to our Sunday morning service here at Yoker Evangelical Church. Whether you're watching us live on YouTube or on Facebook, or you're listening later on in the day over the telephone line, it's great that we are able to gather together to worship God. As we begin our worship today, I'd love to read uh, Psalm 96, just to give us a sense of the glory of God that we have come to praise. So let's and just listen to these words from Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name, proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvellous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendour and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, all you families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendour of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the sea resound and all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Let the trees of the forest sing for joy. Let all creation rejoice before the Lord, for he comes. He comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness. Well, that is an amazing picture of what it means to praise God's glory. I will pray in response to that in a minute. Just first, we've only got one notice this week. Uh, We have our regular Wednesday night prayer meeting. That's on Zoom on Wednesday at half past seven. Uh, And look, if you've never been to that, but you'd like to come along, you'd like to join with the church family in prayer, uh, get in touch with myself or Greg. We would love to give you the Zoom details so that you can join us there. Just now though, let's pray to our Lord and Father. Heavenly Father, please help us to proclaim your salvation and be glad as we worship you. You are great and most worthy of praise. Lord, this morning you know that we are easily distracted by the thoughts running through our head, by the things around us, but help us to focus on you and your word. Help us as we look to glorify you through our praise. Help us to ascribe to you the glory due your name, to speak of your goodness and strength. We confess that so often we are slow to give you the glory, that we glorify other humans or created things or ourselves. And by doing, we rob you of what is rightly yours. Thank you that Jesus came to bring us back to you, that he glorified you in everything he did, even as he died on a cross. Make us more like Jesus today. Father, we pray for the communities where we live and our nation as we continue in lockdown. Please, would you be with those who are still struggling and show us how we as a church body can help and pray. We also pray for Christians across the world who face persecution. Please keep them, hold them in your salvation and protect them from the evil one. Lord, please would you keep all of your followers safe and keep us all together, united in your love. Help us to glorify you in all we do. Amen. Amen. 
Well, as we start to look at this passage, we're going to be continuing looking at the prayer of Jesus in John chapter 17. If you've got a Bible, it would be a great idea to grab that, open it up there to John chapter 17. And in a minute, we're going to read uh, verses 6 down to 26. But first, I want to show you a few things and ask a few questions. If you're at home, please do answer. But I'll also have helpers in the room who are going to help me too. So I have a few things here to show you. Uh, can anybody tell me what this is? It's a stethoscope. Well done. And what kind of person might use a stethoscope? A doctor or a vet? A doctor or a vet or a nurse? Yeah, lots of people. But now this is the important bit. What is the one big thing somebody who uses this does? Save lives. Save lives. They help people. Good. Um, what about this? A, a fire engine. Good. What kind of person might use a, a bigger version of this? Fire. A fireman. What is the one big thing that a fireman does? Puts fire. He puts out fires. What about this? This is a football, yes. Who might use this? A footballer. What's a footballer's one big job? Score goals. Score goals, yeah, win games. All of these people, they have one big thing that they are all about. Everything that they do is so that they can accomplish that one goal. These people all have one big job. And Jesus does too. Uh, Jesus shows us in these chapters that the thing that he is all about is glorifying, is glorifying. And glorifying something is a bit like shining a torch on it. So when we glorify something, we are saying to everybody, this thing is wonderful. I love this thing. Look how good it is. I can glorify this football by shining a torch on it to show everybody how good it is to say, isn't this a wonderful football? Look at it, look how good it is to kick. Look how bouncy it is. I can glorify the football and it's like I'm shining a torch on it. And we can glorify loads and loads of different things in our life. Uh, we can glorify people. We can glorify footballers or footballs. Uh, we can glorify people who do certain careers, countries. Uh, to be honest, the thing that we are best at is glorifying ourselves. We are best at pointing a torch at ourselves and trying to say, I'm wonderful. I am so good at doing these things. Jesus was all about glorifying, but he didn't glorify himself. Jesus' one big job was to glorify his Father God. God the Father. Jesus, everything he did was so that he could shine a torch on God and say, God is great. Uh, that was what Greg told us last week from the first few verses, that, God, that Jesus was all about displaying his Father's glory. It was like he shone a torch on his Father to show everybody, look how good he is. And Jesus did this as he showed off and said, look how loving God the Father is. Look how kind he is. Look how powerful he is. Everybody, look, look at how wise he is, how good, how peaceful. Everybody look at how amazing the Father is. This was Jesus' mission. Everything he did was so that he could glorify the Father. That was his one big job and it's a job that he passes on to disciples disciples are people who have trusted in Jesus they're people who believe that he died on the cross to take away the punishment they deserve so that they could be made right with God and Jesus shows us in these verses that these people will join him in glorifying God the Father their one big thing will be that God is glorified. Uh, just listen to how Jesus describes what has happened to them in the verses. If you've got a Bible, it's verses 6 to 8. 
where Jesus prays to the Father, I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words that you gave me and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you and they believed that you sent me. Do you see there the words that Jesus uses? Disciples have obeyed the Father. They have known that Jesus came from him. They have believed that God the Father sent Jesus. In other words, becoming a Christian is all about saying, God has done this. God has sent Jesus so that he can forgive my sins. And so Christians, they want to glorify him. That is the one big thing that they are to do. And yet Jesus knows that he is going away. Uh, as we read on in John, we're going to see that Jesus will be taken and he will be crucified. And then he will go from the disciples. But he is leaving them with this mission. And so Jesus does the most important thing he can do, the most loving thing he can do. As he leaves them with this mission, he prays for them. He prays for his disciples, both the ones that he had then around him and the ones in the future. Just listen, sorry? No? Just listen again to verse 9. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those that you have given me, for they are yours. I, Jesus is praying for all disciples throughout history. Today, if you are a follower of Jesus, then this is his prayer for you. And just now we're going to listen to the reading. I've asked Greg to, I've asked Gillian to read. So we're going to listen to Gillian read it and the words should appear on the screen. John chapter 17, starting at verse 6. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours and all you have is mine and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one, as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction, so that scripture would be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world, so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have 
for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. Amen. Thank you, Gillian. So we saw there Jesus praying for his disciples. Uh, from verse 20, he is praying not just for his disciples there and then. He is also praying for those in the future. I don't want us to miss that if you are a follower of Jesus today in 2021, sitting in Yoker or Clyde Bank, this is Jesus' prayer for you. That this should fill us with joy. It should make us so excited that we see Jesus, our Lord, praying for us. And today we saw two big things that Jesus prays for. Can you count? One, two, two big things. We've got actions again. Uh, even if you're sitting at home by yourself, do the actions because it will help you to remember. So the first thing, Jesus prays for you to be kept safe. Safely, like a little egg is in there. Jesus prays for you to be kept safe. We read in the verses that while Jesus had been with his disciples, he had been the one that kept them safe. He had been with them. He had looked out for them. He had protected them from things that could hurt them. But now, as Jesus knows that he's going to go away and leave the disciples, he asks his heavenly father to protect them. It's, it's like a loving parent who knows that they have to go away from their child for a bit. So they ask somebody else to look after them. They say, I care about these children. Would, would you look after them for me? Would you make sure nobody hurts them? He wants his followers taken care of. And he does this because he knows that the mission that they have is difficult. And Jesus knows this because it's been his mission too. It's been his mission to glorify God. And now it's his disciples' mission to glorify God. And so he is praying for them to be kept safe. As disciples glorify God, you see, the world is going to hate them. Just listen to verse 16. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Because the disciples have become children of God, they have been saved by Jesus. Jesus warns that they are no longer part of the world. And so verse 14 is true. I have given them your world your word and the world has hated them for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. The world is going to hate disciples because they are on this mission to glorify God. You see, the world loves it when we glorify ourselves. When we say, I'm brilliant, I'm wonderful. And the world loves it when we glorify other people. When we say, oh, this person is wonderful. This person has done amazing things. The world loves it when we glorify organizations, uh, other people. But the one thing that the world cannot stand is when disciples glorify God. Jesus warns that the disciples are in danger because the world is going to hate them. So Jesus prays that God the Father would keep them safe. Now I've got a couple of things here to help us think about safety. Uh, can anybody tell me what this is? Bike a bike helmet, good. It goes on your head. And what a bike helmet does is it keeps you safe so that if you fall off a bike, uh, you don't bump your head on the road. Okay. What about these? What are these? Swimming goggles, good. If you go swimming and you don't want to get water in your eyes, swimming goggles keep you safe by keeping the water out of your eyes. I'll take these off now. Jesus is praying for protection for his disciples. And we need to see verse 15 to understand properly what he means by that. If you've got a Bible, do look at verse 15. Where Jesus says, my prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. 
don't get Jesus wrong here. Don't misunderstand what he's saying. Jesus is praying for safety for his disciples. He is not praying that his disciples back off from the world. He is not praying that his disciples hide themselves away so so that nobody can get at them. Jesus wants his followers to be in the world. And throughout history and the lives of Jesus' followers, we have seen that they will face trouble and strife. That followers of Jesus will face many difficulties. Some will even lose their lives. But that isn't what Jesus is praying for safety from. Look again at verse 15. But that you protect them from the evil one. The danger is from the evil one, our enemy, who wants us to become like the world. This bigger danger is the devil, uh, who is a rebel against God and whose biggest goal is to take people who glorify God and make them glorify something else. The devil's fondest dream, his biggest mission, is to take followers of Jesus who glorify God and make them glorify themselves or other people or something else in the world. Jesus is praying for safety from that. Jesus says, keep my disciples safe. So they are on a mission to glorify God. He wants them kept safe from an enemy who would try and make them do something else. Now, what will keep them safe from that? Well, it's not going to be a bike helmet or some swimming goggles. They protect our body. What we need is something that will protect our soul. And Jesus says the thing that we need to protect us is that we would be sanctified. Sanctified. It's a big word, but it's got a really simple meaning. It means that we become more like Jesus. It means that as we go forward in the Christian life, we will see ourselves changed and we become over time more and more like Jesus. You might have noticed that if you've got two really close friends, they will start to become more like each other. They will tell the same jokes. They will go to the same places. It gets even worse with married couples who their tastes start to change. I drank tea very rarely before I met my wife. Um, She has changed me so that I drink it quite regularly now. We become more like Jesus when we are sanctified. And this is something that every Christian should see in their life. As they become less like the world and more like him. Jesus says that it's by becoming more like him that we will be kept safe from our enemy. And verse 17 helps us to see what will sanctify us. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. What is the thing that will sanctify us? It is this, God's word, the Bible. As we read it, as we pray about it, as we learn from it, God uses that to make us more like Jesus. And that is what will keep us safe as we are on mission to glorify God. As we go to the Bible, we are made more like Jesus. That will keep us safe. And Jesus prayed that you would be kept safe. That is the first thing he prays. The the second thing that Jesus prays for us while we're on mission, Jesus prays that you will be kept together. If you're at home, do this. Jesus prays that you will be kept together. Okay. Jesus wants his people to be kept together while they glorify God. Uh, Remember, Jesus' people are on mission to glorify God. And we can absolutely 
glorify God by ourselves. There are things you and me can do, just ourselves, that will glorify God. But, but that's not God's design, that we do it entirely by ourselves. That's not the full picture. You see, as good as it is when one person shines a light on God and says, God is wonderful, it is even better when more people do it. When there are more torches pointed. Greg, can you come and point a torch at God as well? How much better is that, that more of us? Sandra, can you point a torch as well? No, that's okay. That's okay. Sandra's pointing a torch. It is good when more and more people point torches at God. Because by doing that, more of his glory is seen. God's design is that we would all glorify him and we would be kept together so that it glorifies God more. So Jesus prays that his disciples wouldn't get separated. He wants them to stay together. He prays his disciples wouldn't get distracted and divided, but that they would remain as one. And this can be a big problem with Christians. Although we all want to glorify the same God, it's so easy for arguments to come in and for us to get divided. As people focus more and more on the the things that they want or the way that they want things to be done, it can so easily cause separation. As people get tied up with what they want, it's easy for Christians to become divided. But Jesus prays that we would be kept together. And he prays that we would be united, kept together, because our unity comes from God. Jesus wants us to be united because God is united. But we have all believed the same message from him. Just listen to verse 22. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. So you see there there is glory that, that God the Father gave to Jesus, and then Jesus has given it to us. He has given it to us all. We have all believed in that same message. And so we are called to be united to one another. But we are also called to be united because God is united. Jesus prays that you may be one as I, as we are one. Um, God is three in one. There are three persons in the Godhead. There is the Father, the Son, who is Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And in that trinity, there is complete agreement. There is a union of purpose and of love. They are completely one. Within the Trinity, there is never a day where the Son says, I don't agree with you, Father. There is never a day where the Holy Spirit says, I don't love the Son. There is never a day when the Father says, I just can't be bothered with the pair of you. In the Trinity, it is complete agreement as the Son says, I agree, I love you. And the Father says, I agree, I love you. And the Holy Spirit says, I agree, I love you. They are united together as one. And that is the kind of unity that Jesus wants for his disciples. That kind of being kept together is radical. It comes from the very beginnings in the Old Testament where God introduces himself to his people. In Deuteronomy 6 verse 4, he says, Hear Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one, united completely. Jesus wants that unity for his disciples. Even though they come from many different backgrounds and they have different tastes, they're different ages, different cultures, They like different things. They want to do different things. They are all united by Jesus. Uh, Greg was telling me a story this week about when he met a a Chinese Christian. He was in China 
and he met this guy who had nothing in common with Greg. They didn't have any shared experiences. Uh, they didn't have any shared culture that they could draw on. They might not have liked the same things. They didn't even speak the same language. But because they both had Jesus, they could be kept together. They had that union with other Christians. Our unity is based on God. It is not based on our friendships or our traditions. It's a unity that comes as we all praise God together. And this is something that we need to work at. We need to work at being kept together. And just to get practical for a minute, I've got a couple of suggestions because this is difficult in lockdown. When we can't meet physically in this building um, it can, and we can't meet anywhere, it's tough for us to feel this togetherness. So just a few suggestions. Uh, we can pray together. You might come to the prayer meeting on Wednesday, join together in fellowship there. Or you could just phone up a friend or maybe even another church member who you don't know that well and say, can I pray with you? You could phone people and just have a chat, talk about what you've read in the Bible that day. Or if you find it a bit scary to pick up the phone and, and talk to people, you could write a letter. Everybody's stuck at home at the moment. I bet people would love to get a letter delivered. Maybe something you could do if you're not a member of this church is join us in membership ask about joining this fellowship. That is a way in which we are visibly shown our togetherness, our union in Jesus. Maybe you could think this week about membership. Whatever you do, it is as Jesus works in us that we are more united. And as we grow more united, Jesus' love is seen even more clearly. Check out verse 23. I and them and you and me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and I have loved them, even as you have loved me. Throughout the world, Jesus' love will be seen as Christians are kept together in him. We put his glory on display by being kept together in him. As we do that, we fix more and more lights on God. And together we say, he is great. We glorify him. And if you are a follower of Jesus, then you are on a mission. You are on a mission to glorify God as much as you can. And you will do this by believing his words, trusting in him for forgiveness and obeying what he says. And the really exciting thing that we read today is that as you do this, Jesus is praying for you. Jesus has prayed for you on mission. He has prayed for you, do the actions again, that you will be kept safe as you grow to be more like him. He has prayed that you will be kept together with other believers. It should fill us with comfort and joy to know that Jesus has prayed for us. And this week, think about how you can glorify God in all you do. Confident that Jesus has prayed for you. As Jesus prayed, we are going to pray just now. Let's pray. Father, thank you for Jesus' mission to glorify you and for the mission you have given disciples to join in that, mission, that praise of glorifying you. We rejoice to hear Jesus' praise for us and we join in asking that you would keep us safe, not letting the evil one distract us, and that you would keep us together 
united with one another. Help us in all we do to glorify you. Amen. As we finish, we're going to listen to a song that glorifies God. But as we do that, we're going to have a few questions to think about. Um, You might want to write these down and use them as you're talking to people through the week. So our first question today is, what is the mission that Jesus' followers have to do? And second, why are Christians in danger from the world? And third, how can you be kept together with other Christians? And as we think about those, we're going to listen to or sing the wonderful song, How Great Thou Art.
to glorify God in all we do. Um, I hope that you have a great week. As we finish, let's just read these words from Romans 15 that encourage us again to glorify the Father. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give each of you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had, so that with one mind and one voice, you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.